Hi, this is Scott from Whiskey and Sunshine. Today we were having some fun around the house. It's Sunday, and uh, as you can see by my hat, it is deer season here in Maine. And one of my favorite things to do during deer season is to uh, to hunt with, believe it or not, a muzzle-loading black powder firearm. <laughs> I don't know why I like them. They're old, they're antiquated. They're also very simple. Um, one of the things people don't realize about muzzle loaders is that most of the components that you use, other than the projectile that it fires and the primer that ignites the charge, are all biodegradable and none of them are poisonous. That goes for the powder and all the chemicals that you use to clean and maintain the gun. Uh, they're very, very accurate. Today's muzzle loaders are every bit as accurate as a center fire rifle out to about 200 yards, maybe further. You know, that's that's how far they're accurate with me shooting them. I'm sure there are people that can do better. So uh, we were out on the deck checking the uh, zero and sighting in muzzle loaders today, and I asked Shell, and she agreed it might be a good idea to to turn this into a whole a whole video instead of just a short. So. Let's talk about muzzle loaders for a little bit. Okay, so uh, we've been out and uh, checked the zero on all three of my my front stuffers here, and uh, we'll be throwing that video in while I'm talking about each one. All three of my muzzle loaders are what they call inlines, and what that means is. The primer is in the very back. It ignites the powder, which ignites, you know, pushes the projectile out the barrel. In the old days, the old, uh, I guess you'd call them Hawkins or Kentucky rifles, they were what they called side locks, meaning the hammer was on the outside of the gun. It would have been usually on the right-hand side. There'd be a big, long hammer, and then an elbow, and you'd have a little cap on the outside. You know, they look like a flintlock. And uh, I have nothing against those. I'd love to have one. I just don't. So uh, my oldest one here is actually the first inline, I think, that was ever made. And this, uh, this one is a, this particular one is a Thompson Center Scout. It's actually what's called a Texas Scout. The reason it's a Texas Scout, it's got the half octagon barrel. It's got a lot of extra brass on it. Curved butt plate. It's just fancier. Uh, but these were... Uh, Thompson Center was actually a company right here in Rochester, New Hampshire, so it wasn't very far from here. And for many, many, many years, they made some of the finest muzzle-loading firearms out there. And then in 1997, they had a big fire that wiped out like half of their buildings. And they lost a lot of their records and a lot of their machinery. And that was when they stopped making these scouts. For a long time, you could get a scout in... 45 caliber, 50 caliber, or 54 caliber, and they also made a companion handgun that was just like, used actually the same receiver, it just had a different barrel and a pistol grip stock and a different trigger assembly, and it, it was the same basic firearm except it was a handgun. And they never, they never made those again after the fire. It was gonna cost them too much to tool back up, which is really too bad because Man, I got to tell you, I don't know if it's the little kid in me or what, but when I look at this thing, I'm thinking hunting buffalo on the plains, man. I mean, I just, it just does something for me. It's fun. It's just fun. That, that's what black powder is all about anyway for me is fun. So Thompson, after the fire, started making more modern in lines. They had they'd been making them for a while, actually, but they, they abandoned a lot of the older stuff. And they went to stuff that is more like this. Uh, this particular one is an Omega, and it's a, uh, it, it, it is a inline, meaning that you, just like the others, they load from the front, but instead of pulling the hammer back and putting a primer here, it's more like a Creedmoor. You pull this down, the whole hammer drops along, you know, with your whole firing assembly, and it primes right from the back. So it's a little bit easier. It also lets you have a lot longer barrel. And uh, it's very accurate. This one has fiber optic sights on it. It's a very nice muzzle loader. I, I really like it. 
Uh, it's a little front heavy, but they all are. You got a big steel barrel, you know, and uh, that's just the way they are. But uh, yeah, so that's an Omega, also a 50 cal. All my all my muzzle loaders are 50 caliber. Then this last one, I don't believe actually, I don't think Thompson Center is even making these Omegas anymore. Uh, what has happened is they moved the company largely from New Hampshire down to, I think it's Springfield, Massachusetts. And the reason for that is that they were bought out by Smith & Wesson. And with all of the stuff that's been going on with Smith & Wesson and them downsizing and tightening their budget, they've kind of uh, diverged themselves from uh, Thompson Center. And so nobody's really sure what Thompson Center is going to do anymore. They, they still make the uh, Encore, which is the one... That gun, you buy one receiver and you can buy a black powder barrel for it. You can buy a 3030 barrel for it. You can buy a 30 6 barrel for it. You can buy anything you want. And it's just a very versatile thing. They're also very expensive. They're very nice. This, As far as I know, they're still making those in some uh, more modern bolt-action rifles. But a lot of these older-style inlines, they stopped making when Smith & Wesson bailed out on them. So their future is still kind of uncertain, which is too bad because, man, they made some nice stuff. They really did. So this other one is actually a CVA Wolf, and it's probably the least expensive, uh, you know, when it was new, of all of them. And this one, of course, has a scope on it. doesn't have any sights. So that was their way of saving money at the time. And it's a lot like the action of a single-shot shotgun. It breaks down like a single shot shotgun, but you don't load it through the rear. You just put the primer in the back, okay? So you still load it from the front, so it's still a muzzle loader, but again, the primer goes in from the back, so it's still technically an inline, so there's still a modern gun. None of these require a background check to purchase. You can walk into any gun store and buy a black powder rifle, as long as it is not a centerfire, you can buy it, pay the bill, and walk out the door with it in your hand with no paperwork other than a sales receipt, which is kind of cool. All these guns are drilled and tapped for a scope. This is the only one I have a scope on because it has no sights. This one, the barrel is a little shorter, and the point of balance is a little better, I think. It's uh, a lot easier to manage. Uh, they're a good gun. I have nothing against the CVA Wolf, or I wouldn't have one. If you enjoyed this video, click the link for part two of our black powder and muzzle loading video series where we'll be talking about propellant choices and choices of projectiles.